riding a motorbike in in the sand in the desert. April and Aaron here from Knox. We're here today with Molly and Georgia. Mm -hmm. Molly and Georgia have just been on a week-long trip to Morocco where they rode across the desert on monkey bikes. Now, they went into this as complete newbies and we sent them off with a load of Knox kit to keep them protected and we're here today to hear everything about their trip. So, Molly and Georgia. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> so, where did it all start? Like, what made you want to do it? What inspired the whole thing? Um, I'm afraid that I'm guilty <laughs> for coming up with this mad idea. I was, um, I had quite the year last year. I, I got married and we bought a house and, and all of these things were, they were wonderful, but I found kind of after everything calmed down, I just had this feeling of, of like really craving, um, some kind of adventure or something like every everything seemed way too settled all of a sudden mm -hmm. and thank goodness i was able to come to georgia to do it with me <laughs> i sent georgia a mad email that she probably read and was like she's lost her mind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time receiving something that's so strange is actually very intriguing yeah um, sure. and yeah i mean it just sounded like such an exciting and amazing thing to do mm. um and when i mentioned it to a couple of people their immediate response was, You're mad, that sounds stupid, you can't do that. <laughs> what, two women travelling on their own? And that mm. also, you know, made me think, what, why? I don't understand. And that, of course, opened a whole avenue of questions mm. about why this kind of thing um, is mostly limited to men, I suppose. Sure. And why the thought of two women doing it was so extraordinary to so many people. Mm -hmm. um, which got me thinking about female travel and solo travel and why we have all these um, preconceived notions about the danger of female travel mm. um, and whether that's just in our heads and whether that's real. Anyway, all of these questions sprung up and it sounded so fun. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we signed up pretty quickly. Well, you yeah. chucked a few things in there, to be honest. I mean, you know, like I can ride a motorbike, <laughs> I'm a bloke. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be super nervous about doing anything like that. Go, mm. You know, number one, going to Morocco, mm. which is like, yeah. mm. you know, I don't know what the score is there. Number two, you haven't ridden a motorbike before, and monkey bikes as well. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. There were a lot of hurdles. To yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well done. Pretty we much. don't do things by heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we should, we're assuming at this point that you made it. We did. We did. Just yeah. by yeah. the skin of our teeth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do wish that we'd listened to some other advice that we ignored, like about things like basic mechanics stuff. Okay. Which uh, would have, I think. I mean, because we spent a lot of time with mechanics. Yeah, really? twice a day. Oh I would my say. god! Really? Every day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> that is not an understatement. No. I think we spent. If we were to break down the trip, I would say a third of the time was spent at mechanic. Mm. Wow. <laughs> at least, probably, and uh, another third was spent on the ground. <laughs> yeah. I have good going. I really yeah. do. And a third was moving. Yeah. 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 The rule of thirds. Yeah, Surely. exactly. But yeah, the bikes, because they're just so unsuited to that terrain. Okay. I yeah. mean, and going uphill, you know, because we were in the bloody mountains. Yeah. Mm. And really steep inclines, and they just did not like it. Very good. So, what, what, I mean, why, why monkey bikes? Um, I suppose that was a question we were it, asking yeah. before. Oh, yeah, it, it, it was That's a right. mix, really. Um, I think that was what we, we found a company that would rent those to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you don't in, have in, in Morocco. Yeah. In Morocco. Mm -hmm. And they would they had them for us at the start point and they would they picked them up at the end point, which is great. They dealt with all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Um the other thing, and we didn't have to technically have a license, okay. which we didn't know, um, we weren't overly confident we would pass a motorcycle yeah. license test, so it was nice to know that it wasn't a necessity in the short time we were dealing with in the lead up. Mm -hmm. I will say, we did pass, which is shocking, <laughs> so I did half my test with my kickstand down, but still, I think the guy <laughs> maybe felt sorry for me. Um, but. Um, but yeah, it, so it was nice to know we didn't have to have that, um, that certificate. And mm. also, 
as ridiculous as they were, there was something comforting knowing mm. that the seat is just barely two feet off yeah. the ground. Like, mm. how much damage can you do? Whereas yeah. if we were riding, you know, BMWs or something. Yeah, much taller bikes. Yeah, and, and, and heavier. And, and more powerful. And, quite tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. huge. Because oh. we did it one day of off-road training. Yeah, did you? Yeah. Before we went. In, oh. in, in England, though. In England, with uh, Docklands Riders. Oh, okay. right. Which was, I'm so glad we did it, but it was mm. absolutely terrifying. For me, when I think about motorcycle travel, I think actually you can, there's the potential to experience a country in perhaps yeah. a different way than you would otherwise yeah, be able definitely. to. Did you guys experience that with I Morocco? Hundred so percent. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I think we both tra like love to travel, and mm. I've traveled to a lot of different places, mm. but there's something so different about being seeing a country on the back of a motorcycle because you're mm. you're vulnerable in so many interpretations of that word mm. uh, both in body but also in your interactions I think so often mm. we travel somewhere via plane or car mm. and you're constantly encased in this kind of protective bubble that that doesn't really allow you to fully immerse with the communities and mm. the um, and the towns and and the infrastructure and the beautiful geography, and there's something, and I will say there's something about being not only on a bike but being on a really bad bike where we did have to go to mechanics every <laughs> yeah. single day. Yeah. We were yeah. constantly. I mean, with this journey was a success only because of the millions of people yeah. who helped us along the way. Um, who were way more knowledgeable um, about bikes than we were. Not hard, mm. I would say. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and also because it, there were such silly machines, I think it was really, it was like a real leveller, you know, because mm. immediately you could all just, I mean, everyone would be like, ha ha, we'd be like, I know, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we'd just have a chat, and it was, I don't know, it was just really nice and an equaliser, I suppose, really. Mm. And people were so willing to help because they could see that we really needed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Sure, it's yeah. quite vulnerable. Yeah. Place yeah. when you're in a place where you, you, yeah, sure. yeah, I'm, definitely. I'm, I totally understand. But everyone was so kind, and you know, and it was really fun chatting yeah. to people, and yeah. you know, to try to p do pigeon French and Spanish and English, and mm. you know, Arabic and Berber. We don't speak so much of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So, is it something that you'd recommend? Oh my god. I mean, yeah. ten times yeah. over. It was such um, the high we felt when we reached that last day we were supposed to have the bikes back by five we showed up at 8 p.m um <laughs> after the lap by the time the last day came these bikes were all black we had named them mine was black beauty george's was steven um <laughs> <laughs> and i miss steven oh, so I do much too. I know. <laughs> um uh, by the time we got to that last day mm -hmm. and we kind of were pulling up to where we could see um uh, where we were going to drop them off. It was such a feeling of accomplishment. I think we were both shocked that we had arrived there. I know. Yeah. And it's so funny because although in, you know, rel in relative terms, like obviously people have done much oh my bigger things and this is to lots of people just not a big deal. But to us, it was like so huge, you know, when mm. it's something that's just, you would never even imagine yourself doing. And we arrived, got to the finish mm. line. I don't know what we were expecting, but I just felt surely there'd be a crowd of people <laughs> like trophies. Because yeah. I was like, Rosette. why is no one making yeah, a big yeah, deal yeah. out of this? This is yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've yet to receive our trophy, but, what? you know. <laughs> just felt like huge. We just spent that yeah. whole evening, didn't we? We were in our hotel, oh. we had to fly back the next day. We were just like staring at each other. In we, we ordered mm. the most gratuitous cheese and uh, chips plate, basically. To, like, <laughs> our we're like, should we do champagne? And then they're like, it could take 30 minutes for together. We're like, we'll definitely be asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just send up the cheese and chips. <laughs> Obviously, you guys were wearing Knox products for, for out. I mean, maybe you could like tell us a little bit yeah. about your experience. Oh, and thank you. It sounds like you crashed Gosh. a few times. So. Oh, my God. We were rolling around that Moroccan terrain. I <laughs> we really were. We, at the beginning, I was like, this is... We're going to be more off than on, to be honest. Yeah. It just everything felt so out of control. And at the end, we're like, yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just brilliant. The body armor, especially, which having had no experience of it beforehand, mm. we, we did wonder. We were like, do we need this? Mm. We? Yeah, I mean, yes. We did. Yeah. yeah. It was. I think it was just so 
it was really nice to be in something that fit really well. Yeah, mm. and that, that looked so stylish. Yeah, mm. that, that was, because um, even I did a couple day, a three day training course in California. Mm. Um, and basically five of the hours were actually riding in a parking lot. Um, and they were like, you've never been in anything. So they gave me some, some stuff because I hadn't gotten my Knox gear yet. Yeah. And it was all kind of like ill-fitting. And I fell off mm. and I might as well not have been wearing yeah. anything, yeah. you know? Because if, it's, if something doesn't fit you well, mm. um, then you're almost, it's almost like you're just not wearing anything. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, absolutely. The pad, the pad not in the right place to move around. And yeah. so the Knox gear was amazing. Um, one, because it fit really well mm. and it was comfortable. Um, and there was so much about what we were doing that was uncomfortable. Yes, that so yeah. to have clothing that was comfortable so was great. We had the really hot and the really cold. Yeah. And the jackets, this is this my trusty one, um, they're, comp they're really breathable. So when yeah. you're in the desert, yeah. we weren't yeah, we hot. And yeah. it was crazy because yeah. you would see other yeah. people who would, in the desert, they'd take off their jackets because, mm -hmm. they're, you know, it's like, it, it is so hot. Yeah. But this... <laughs> I mean, yeah. for multiple reasons, it was going to stay glued to my skin. <laughs> yeah. But it really wasn't. You didn't feel the heat, which is amazing when you think about mm. how much padding is in there yeah, and everything. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And That's equally, really when good. we were freezing, you know, putting on the extra, so we had the long... Um, the cold colours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then putting the zip up top on top. Yeah. Just, we were, like, it was fine. It was, it? It was amazing. I have to say, yeah. the fact that something that, like, like yeah. small looking yeah. and light can, pro uh, like, provide that yeah. much warmth is amazing. Yeah. yeah, you just didn't feel any of that yeah. that cold wind hitting yeah. you. Yeah, and having the um, That's great. being able to put the knee pads to take them in and out and stuff as well yeah. was absolutely oh. brilliant. Because, yeah, because you know we well, I mean as I said we wore the same thing the whole time. So yeah. being able to for lunch just <laughs> like, like have those bad boys out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. And then it yeah. kept them in place like the hip yeah. pads. and the hip pads. Thank God oh. for hip pads. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. well, funnily enough, actually, if you're gonna fall off like. A lot of the time, you hit the yeah. hips. Well, yeah, you just hear go down. Yeah, yeah. 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 because a lot of people don't wear them. Think that you think, yeah. oh, knee pads, but actually, the yeah. chance of hitting your knee is a lot less than your hip. Yes, you know? I, my hips are yeah. a lot, and actually, my back. I I got I had the accidental wheelie down to a T yeah. by the time the strip was done. So there was a lot of backwards action and a lot of sideways action. Um, I was very glad to have my knee pads more because it protected when the when the bike would, yeah. I mean, oh, okay. would yeah. fall down. But really, those hip pads, I mean, because yeah. you go, you, I mean, you go down hard on asphalt and if you don't have protection yeah. there, sure. especially, yeah. and I think really, it's funny because when I, we were looking online at a lot yeah. of the gear, I think it's so wow. hard to find companies that make things tailored for women. Mm. There's kind of this like unisex vibe where if they do have women's gear, it's like, this is your one option. And mm. if you don't like it, sorry. Um, yeah. And they don't think, I mean, realistically, women riding a bike, we, our hips, we have, we have hips, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's more, almost more of an issue, I think, because yeah. it is something that you are going to hit when you go down. So it's yeah. great to have. Yeah. Yeah. And also we so look nice. so cool. Yeah. So, despite the fact that we didn't know what we were doing, we looked brilliant. Yeah. Oh, well, that's so really great. So look at that jacket. Oh, I, just, so I cool. loved it. And honestly, I think yeah. it really um, helped people, um, yeah, I think that we knew what we were doing. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, like covered up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All the gear and no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like checking out um, these oh. gloves earlier and I've actually seen that the SPF, uh, SPS, the skateboard, has actually had a good scuff. Oh, oh. so oh my God. Like, yeah. it's good to know it has actually had a good scuff. And Trust has me. Oh. done something. <laughs> it really Those, did. Yeah, we were basically, it. I mean, we're perfect crash dummies. We yeah. really <laughs> tested the gear yeah. to its yeah. maximum <laughs> <we> extent. <laughs> So, am I, am I right in thinking there was a, the, you, you know, you guys were doing this partly for charity too? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So Maybe there's you can tell um, a, bit, a little bit about that. Mm, in Asni, um, just outside of Marrakesh, there's a boarding house called EFA, uh, Education for All Morocco. Mm. So that, that's the one that we visited. Um, but there's basically a group mm. of um, schools which give education to girls from villages in the High Atlas mm. who would otherwise, you know, not have to go to school. Um, and their brothers would go, but then the girls post 11, it's not compulsory. Okay. Mm. Um, so these boarding houses take the often brightest children um, and have them stay in the, in the boarding houses and then send them off to school from there. 
which is oh. so amazing. Yeah. It really, really is. Yeah. yeah. It was really amazing because I think the another a reason why Morocco is such a great place to go motorcycling is everything's really spread out. There, you have these long expanses where, you know, it's just kind of you and the beautiful scenery. But when it comes to school and these communities, um, women and girls have have really suffered because of that because they're so far mm. away from um, schools. Mm. So. And it's not as acceptable for girls to kind of be go for long walks on their own to get to school as it is for boys. So they build the boarding houses near secondary schools so that, and they're run by women, so that families feel comfortable sending their girls there so their, their daughters can proceed to get a, a higher education, um, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the girls are just lovely. It was, yeah. so, it was a really special day because we did that before embarking on the whole the whole trip. Okay. Mm. Um, so it was a great That's way to song for sure. Yeah. yeah. They all thought we were absolutely insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah knowing obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, we were like, oh do. my god. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were so sweet. One of them, um, you know, we asked one of them what they'd be doing. She she was a fourteen year old girl. What mm. she'd be doing if she wasn't there? And she said um, she'd be married. And we were like, oh, okay. Well, would you would you like to be married? And it was so funny. They're just all all like all of us as teenagers. Yeah. The whole classroom like erupted with laughter. She was like, no, oh. my gosh, it's gross. It was yeah. so funny. But yeah, so wow. you know, it's yeah. brilliant that they're doing what they do. Oh, anything okay. else you'd like to say about the? Just thank you so yeah. much. We really, honestly, oh. all our gear. We were just, it was just brilliant. It was so brilliant. Yeah. We couldn't have hoped for more and really realized when we were there just how vital it is like the material yeah. everything it didn't feel too heavy yeah like it didn't ham like hamper us down in any way yeah. and yet it did such an amazing job of protecting us oh so it really yeah. it blows my mind really that it worked so it's just thank you so much yeah. oh, thank you from us thank you from everybody in our family and our <laughs> friends. They're, they're like oh my god my husband i think will hug my jacket before he hugged me when i walked in the door he's like thank god for this <laughs> Um, but it was yeah. it was just really really special to to know that we were wearing uh, a brand that was um, that m like literally had our back. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it was really um, it made the entire journey actually enjoyable to know yeah. that, that we we were going to be okay when we fell off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. That's so good. So we've had a great time chatting to Georgia and Molly and them telling us everything about their trip. You know, we hope that's really, really inspired you. Um, we're going to link everything. We'll link Georgia and Molly, the charity, link all the kit. Um, and yeah, thanks again, guys, for coming oh in. Thank it's you. Been so good. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Amazing. We can't wait for the next uh, one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Us too. <laughs> Super.